Okay, let me try to clarify what I was saying uh, on Monday night about the concentration levels and the three different types of industry structures. So here I have a number line, zero to 10,000, um, zero representing perfect competition, 10,000 representing monopoly, and of course, perfect competition doesn't really happen in the, uh, in the real world. Uh, monopolies do happen, but not all that often. So you'll see that uh, I split the number line between zero and 10,000 at the middle point, which is 5,000. And you'll notice that on the right of 5,000, almost nothing happens. It's just duopoly from 5,000 to 10,000. And right at the 5,000 mark, it is a split market duopoly where two firms own 50% of the market. And to the right of that, up until 10,000, would be a non-split market duopoly where one firm owns 60%, the other 40, or 70, 30, or 80, 20. And of course, if you squared, for example, 80 and 20, you'd get 6,400 plus 400, so you would have a duopoly that's more than 5,000, so about 6,800 in that case. If we look closer to perfect competition, this is what we're going to call fragmented. And we're going to say that this is a continuous scale, not discrete. And so we're just going to say things are more fragmented than others or more concentrated uh, than others. So most of the action happens to the left of the 5,000 and way to the left of the 5,000. Uh, you'll notice I also included the number 1,800, and that is where the Department of Justice antitrust uh, labels moderately concentrated and where we can start to say that oligopolies begin. And the higher the number within that 1,800 to 5,000, clearly the more oligopolistic uh, and potentially dangerous that the, uh, that the industry would be. So uh, zero being perfect competition, we could say that anything that comes close to zero is highly fragmented. So for example, I have pizza shops. I'm guessing that the Herfindahl level is about a 100 uh, if for pizza shops, and so that is highly fragmented. Home builders, about 300. Again, very, very fragmented. As I said the other day, uh, we have 35,000 home builders, of which only 12 have more than 1% market share. So 34,988 are uh, so tiny that we wouldn't even include them in the Herfindahl measure. Uh, I have a crooked line to supermarkets, which is the industry that we looked at last week, and they're going to be at 1154. We'll call that low concentration, 1154, not an oligopoly. Um, but also, we wouldn't call it really fragmented either. I mean, there are some, some major players, including Walmart and Kroger, etc. Uh, cell phone service, which is something that we've talked about a lot this semester, is about 2,800. And, of course, we know that the antitrust authorities will become, will become interested in a merger um, if the pre-merger is 1,800 or more, and the delta between pre-merger and post-merger is greater than 100. And so we know that the reason that the Department of Justice wanted to stop at AT&T and T-Mobile was because both of those conditions were met. Okay, we have a pre-merger HHI at 2,800, and we had a difference of about seven or 800. So uh, right in the middle of that oligopoly, which is between, say, 1,800 and 5,000, uh, we would have cell phone service. So it's very, very concentrated. And we can that's intuitive because we know there are only four companies that control 90 or 91 percent of the market. So... We just want to look at this more as a continuous scale, and we don't want to get too involved in labeling things in their industry structures unless it's obvious. But we want to say that they go from 0 to 10,000, with most industries falling between 0 and, say, 2,000. So most industries are going to fall way to the left on this number line. And uh, hopefully that helps to clarify what we talked about the other day.